Hello and welcome. It is the completion of the fourth day of February 2020 as we enter into the fifth day. All bets, trades of the like, well that's within each his own risk and their own reward. Let's uh, take a look at these cryptocurrency markets. Starting off within Bitcoin against the uh, US dollar. And from these uh, lows a little over a year ago at uh, near 3,000. We've uh, we had the big run first half of last year to above 12. Since then, we had this run of several lower lows, and now we're having higher highs along the way. Price action retracing only a portion, but the portion down to here from this low. And now same thing from this low to this high right now thus far, managing to get up to this point, which matches this previous level of resistance. If it pulls back, it can come down to this area here, and if it does... And then it comes back to this level of resistance. Well, that would create an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And we might not even find much more resistance here because we already have found a little bit over the last few days, a little bit of a downtrend here as well. But key words on that is a little bit. Still within the 18 average of highs, not into the lows area. It has came to the upper end for where it came from in here. It has not came down to the lower end. That area would be at around 8,800. And of course, that would coincide with the area of the rising 18 average of lows. On the short term time frame, an attempt a couple hours ago to get above the 18 average of highs, not able to hold and sustain such. The downtrend from these highs about a couple or three dozen periods ago has a, a band flattening out, so neutrality is in stage in here. Uh, that's really m not much more else to say about it because we've had the support here, we've had the resistance in here. So until it can break into that resistance, this downtrend is in a neutralized situation. And getting out above here means we can start about retracing this empty space, 61.8% key level. But breaking resistance, you obviously expect it to be a decent leg higher, meaning at least that. Uh, as the next level of resistance and breaking on support. Same thing. You break down below this level, very short term level here, and then decent break at least down to here. And then, of course, 8,088, I think I stated, but uh, you'd expect a decent break on either side of the range. Within the more longer term or the weekly chart, it has managed to uh, get above this 18 average, but showing a lot of strength just within this is. Uh, Pretty cool to see, but it also means within that, the 18 average of lows starting to rise at a pretty okay rate of ascent, and the 18 average of highs is, is rising. And that's the start of getting this thing into a reversal mode. It's already gotten to buy this shorter term resistance level in here. Uh, so therefore, still holding up relatively well. You can see in here how the must hold area is where the 18 average of lows is this key point in here. So the the support line to where that inverted head and shoulders pattern would be, there would be your left shoulder, this would be your head if there's going to be a retracement. And not only would it be the completion of it, but it is really that old must hold area. And again, that area would come in around 78, 7700 ballpark area. Let's move on to some altcoins against Bitcoin. I'm not trading too many, so I'm only going to show the same very few as we move on here. Not much... Uh, as really this is more of a part-time uh, position for me making the trades and I'd rather have higher vol volume on less crosses and thus I trade like just a handful of coins like Ripple, Bitcoin Cash, Theta, Tezo, stuff like that. So I'll show the ones that I like and that I own and on the weekly chart within Ripple we can uh, see what's just been a long long sideways consolidation at around a 2400 low point. Resistance, uh, I mean, short term, we're at this level how upper end now. But this high comes in at 37.67, which would be the upper targets for any short term moves, which we're going to be looking at when we take a look at this on uh, other time frames and on the daily chart. Very, very, very interesting. We had this little session in here first, or this situation, I should say, rather. It has that very big breakout, but it rejects it immediately. A little bit of another fail, failing attempt in here. But, but that didn't go, and most certainly a failed breakdown occurring uh, down in here. And from failed moves, I'm going to say sometimes, I don't know what oftentimes, a fast move, but most certainly a concise move, in this case both, in the opposite direction, and you'd expect it to go to where to, well, this is a key level. So now we're at that key level. How is it going to play out? If we don't find resistance, this matches up with major support as well. 
what's going to happen? It's going to be a decent sized move. I'd be very, I mean, I guess I can't say be surprised if this is resistance piercing X was normal. But if we're not going to be finding resistance at this point, we got a lot of this empty space in here. As the next point I'd be looking at is this previous level of resistance, which would coincide with about a 61.8% retracement from this low to this high. The must hold area in here most certainly is, uh, I'm drawing these lines at about 27 low change. As far as Tesla's is concerned, which will be the next one, on its daily chart, we can uh, see it here we've had a few good updates from these January 29th lows and the decent size gain occurring on February the 2nd, a couple days ago. Since then, it has had uh, a lot of sideways consolidation, a failed attempt to break out in this little period in here. And it has so far six held and successfully corrected well within the 18 with a layer of support here for a few periods, resisting the highs, coming back to support. Now at the highs again, the 18 average of lows is rising, 18 average of highs is declining. So here we have the symmetrical movement and uh, at some point there, this thing will get, get going again and have a decent sized move. And from this on the daily, if it breaks it above resistance, I'm looking at a move quick or a concise move to 25 and a half. And if this thing breaks down, I'm going to be looking for this to uh, really not only, well, first a little bit of support at 1981, but really the big area for where it came from down towards the uh, 1979 mark. Theta is up next at 1127, which is the must hold area, has held on four different occasions very, very nicely in the last one. Wow. About, uh, what, about eight or so? Nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Eight red periods down in a row, price action falling from a high of 1395 and then completing its low in at 1081. That was uh, 19 plus 27, 46 basis points below this on the Pierce Extra. And the resistance of Piercing Extra on 1278 cents. Uh, well, that has occurred one, two, three, four. What a big one on the fourth one, and now five. Five different times now it has done that within this big time, large, large, large sideways consolidation range, supporting what was a very, very long, long, long range of resistance. Back in July, August, September, October, November time frame. And getting it above this resistance level here where we are now, previous high established back in uh, late December, that 1500, getting above that, some key areas in which it went to. We have uh, here next at 18 uh, and change. And then we have this conjunction area at around 2400. 3600 was a big Fibonacci level. 30, previous, not really Fibonacci, no, it was previous key high. 3600, this uh, conjunction area, I guess, in here, which coincides with this high here as well. And that coincides with the uh, uh, Theta Binance open price and its previous high from before. So yeah, 3600 retested what was this high. Then it came back, it pierced it well above. We've had this long bit of time where we've pretty much resisted this previous level of support. But what hasn't happened is any breakdown of the support that it has established. And getting out above here, this resistance, the moves could, I mean, when cryptos are ready to go, I mean, as we can see in these examples here, they, they can just fly to the upside pretty high and pretty fast. Which leads me to my finished one that I want to show, which is H bar Hadara Hashgraph, because when they can fly, they can fly. And this is what this is like my fun gamble coin, if you will. And in ratio trading, it has been. Uh, I'm gonna get back to this in a sec. I can go to Bitcoin Cash after this, as that's one of the ones I trade this against. But we can see that the big decline on here really started in the mid part of December ending at the end. So the last two weeks of December, this thing fell from like 336 down to like 140. Therefore losing well more than 50, even closer to 60, 62-ish percent of its value just from this high. And now recently we have this move, but I'm just gonna quickly put on Bitcoin Cash, come back to this one again. And amongst this, I'm, December 15th, it did go down, and but Run around December 27th, really after the decline was over and Tadara wasn't going up. Well, Bitcoin Cash went up, which meant as this was going down, well, this went down from like 29.10 handle to 25.80. So that's like nothing compared to another market going down like 60 plus percent. So when this was going down, it meant I was selling this on the way down to buy Hadara on the way down more. 
And then when this was going up, I was selling this again, over, over, and over, and over again, with all the Hadara things I've been trading it with. It's been sell whatever to buy Hadara, and that's just how it is. Right now, as far as Bitcoin Cash is concerned, and I did want to talk about this, which is very interesting, because I was going to do a video early in the afternoon with plans on talking about it. Then I totally forgot about it uh, in the last few minutes. But very, very good setup here on the daily term time frame. This is something uh, that looks pretty poised and ready to get going, especially when you consider that you have this level of resistance, a very good correctionary uh, at play. You establish or no, you attest but this is level so major resistance has been played and how this has been forming i think is a very bullish situation okay back to h bar and i've been able to sell a little bit of it i want to sell more i want, i really do hope this thing can make a nice little move just now even when i say now in the next several days on this actual move on this break that it's had above the 18 here and 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 when we look at this this 300 handle here though 300 seems to be an area at least should have a next test and a quick move up to if it's going to have this type of play obviously if it doesn't we're having a failed break it we know the story failed move fast move if this thing doesn't succeed this must hold area obviously around 142 where it came from in here if it fails there and you see weakness and failing from that point i don't like the chances 160 to support and double digit satoshi most likely is coming but as it plays now, the risk reward of these things, the volatility is extreme. And that's just how I like, the, like this game. But anyway, back to this again. So there's your decline, obviously noticeable, pretty much spending almost the entire duration of the bear market ever since it left it on December the 16th, below and well below at that, the 18 average of lows. A uh, little bit of resistance in here, a little getting in it at this point, but, but not much. Here, it's attempting to have the band flat now, but with the 18 still declining in a downtrend, it didn't succeed there. Although this little bit in here within this failed breakup, this was a total. Uh, yeah, that, that's it for the downtrend at least. And as we look at how uh, the previous uh, two handles were before it started going up on the 3rd of February. We had a move that got above the 18 average of highs on January 31st, but for two consecutive days held and stayed within that area. That's a bullish signal, and we can see that uh, the follow-through shouldn't be all that big of a surprise, and a very much a large statement to have this big, big break above this, and uh, just get above this previous resistance level from January 5th, but have some decent sized gains. 23% on this day, and on today's session, pretty much 14 and a half percent. We take a look at this on the single hour term time frame. There was the breakout here, 4 o'clock in the morning, February 3rd, and then breaking out for about one consecutive day or so as it topped at about, well, there's 4 o'clock in the morning the next day. So yeah, basically almost 24 hours of a run towards the upside going from about 140 Satoshi up to about 208. Since that point, it's managed to establish resistance and support along the way from its point. We can see right in here at around uh, 200, but uh, one or two Satoshis lower than that, 198, 199, has been a uh, the lower end of this up level. And here, between 204 and the high of 208. So the entire range in here to get above, if it's able to do that, this thing, just might be able to sustain itself. I do like how it has so far continued to correct amongst this. Again, two different situations in trying to break it out, unable to succeed on either one, but it hasn't again. It has succeeded completely in this correctionary phase. When you see a big move like this, if this fails, well, you got this empty space. I want to longer the term time frame out to get this. And eh, maybe I don't want to go with a three hour eight hour this is probably the time frame i would use for like a must hold but yeah where's where do we came from what's a 61.8 percent fib correction area that that would generally be the uh, handles i would look for to determining what i would uh, deem that level to be and uh, i'd like to thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day Bye bye